Hi, I'm Margaret Bird and welcome to Color Quest. We are out and about in my neighborhood and I am in search of blue spruce. Now, I have been using different kinds of evergreen trees over the last few videos to create a pretty remarkable palette of various colors and the one last evergreen that I'd like to see about is blue spruce. Now, I walked around my neighborhood and tried to see if I could identify a blue spruce and one of the most obvious characteristics is, is blue color. So I'm going to show you behind me the differences in terms of color and you might be able to see what I believe is a blue spruce and I'm going to head down and look around the base of the tree, see if I can find some downed boughs and I have a couple of different trees over there that I can poke around in so why don't you come with me and let's go see if we can look a little more closely at the blue spruce. So my neighborhood is built in some wetlands. So I have um, a pond that's right here in my neighborhood. And if I look across the various evergreens that are out near the slough, you can see different shapes and sizes and also different colors. And so we have three trees right next to each other right there, and they're all different. One has a juniper on the left, and to the right, you'll see the pine right here. Right in the middle is definitely a spruce, and although it's kind of hard to see in this video, it has a very blue hue. So I'm gonna walk down there to see what it looks like up close. Now, if I pan across here, I see another one right there, which is probably gonna be a blue spruce. And then if I go in the other direction, I can see, and this is a pine here, but I can see one back there, right there, that I'm pretty sure is a blue spruce. So let's go up close and see what they look like and see if we can find some down boughs. So I made it down to the spruce and one of the markers of a blue spruce is that the needles are very hard and kind of pokey. So you wouldn't want to be stepping on one of these on the on the ground if you were barefoot but i can tell right away you can see just how blue or the blue hue that it is and it's very very sharp and the needles are stiff here is the other one that i could see from up on the hill and again very very sharp and stiff needles which are unlike the standard spruce and definitely different than the pine. So, and again, this really beautiful blue color. Right next to this blue spruce are these red wooded trees. They're all over my neighborhood and I really need to do some work in trying to identify what they are because they're absolutely beautiful. And I'm wondering if the wood of these branches wouldn't uh, produce a more reddish color in the dye pot. So I'll have to check that out later. But right now we're gonna get back to this tree. I have looked around the base of three trees now I haven't been able to find any downed boughs. So what I have done is just pruned one small pruning from each of the trees. And I took it from a branch that was low on the tree and had multiple shoots coming out so as not to take too much from any one tree. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick those up and head back to the kitchen. I'm laughing right now because I wish I had brought gloves <laughs> because those boughs that I'm trying to pick up with my bare hands and it hurts too much. So those needles are definitely <laughs> loose spruce. 
I'm gonna have to figure out how to uh, pick those up to take them home. <laughs> so lesson here, always go prepared. Should have had gloves. Oh well, next time. All right, I'm holding them by the very ends, trying to avoid the sharp needles. And so I'm gonna head back now. Now, blue is hard to find in nature, really, at least from a dye perspective. And so I'm really looking forward to seeing what I might be able to do with this blue spruce. So in any event, let's go back in and see if blue is going to be able to come out of the dye pot today with the blue spruce. Okay. Time to start brewing.
So talk about not being prepared. I think I need some new clippers. They are super dull, but I managed to get through cutting up those pieces of blue spruce to fit into my dye pot. Now, one thing you may be remembering is that when we looked at noble fur and added iron to it, it also turned gray. But looking at the comparison between the gray of the noble fir and the gray of the blue spruce, there was quite a difference. And what I would describe as a warm gray versus a cool gray, I really do see the blue tones coming through from the blue spruce. So it really continues to add another variation within the gray palette, which I love. It's so great to be able to add darker neutrals to anything that you're doing, whether it be your wardrobe or projects that you're doing for dyeing. It really does add a really beautiful touch to introduce grays into your palette. So moving on next time, we are still in the middle of winter here in the Pacific Northwest, as you probably noticed with the rainy weather, but I am ready to think about spring and even summer for that matter. So next time on Color Quest, we are going to start looking at dye with flowers. Now, there's already been one video out there on this channel about hibiscus. I don't have any hibiscus near me. But what I'm going to do since I'm still in the winter months is I'm going to look at recycling. And what I'm going to be doing is showing you how we can use bouquets to be able to recycle or repurpose them for dye. So come back next week so you can see the first of a series of flower dyes that we're going to be throwing into our dye pot and brewing up and trying to welcome spring, at least into the Northern Hemisphere, because it's about time. Thank you as always, and look forward to seeing you next time on Color Quest. All right, time to die. That always sounds bad. Okay, let's see. <laughs> time to start dying doesn't sound any better.